Hi family, so glad we could, we could be together again in person. So glad that you are in church, CFC Johannesburg. And we believe that everybody will be allowed to come in very soon. All right, for all of you that are in the main sanctuary, the theater, the Dr. Bev, the Dr. Theo, and the Sheila Palmer, give yourselves a great big praise God hand clap. And for those of you that are sitting at home watching live this morning, God bless you. Give yourselves a great big hand clap. We believe soon you can all come to church in person. All right, we're going to continue our series, part five today, in the subject, The Father Has Destined You to Live in His Abundant Life. All right, let's go to our theme scripture, John 15, verse 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. All right, so the vine is the trunk of the tree, the stem of the tree. That's Jesus, and we are the branches. Then he said, he who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit, much fruit. So that means that the branch that is attached to the tree will bear fruit, and the branch that's on the ground will not bear fruit. All right? So we want to be a branch that abides in the vine. And we do that by various ways. Number one, fellowshipping at church like you are doing right now. Number two, go to a fellowship group. Hang out with other Christians. Let the branches hang out together, fellowship together. Number three, by uh, praying in the Spirit or praying in English, worshiping the Lord, talking to the Lord, reading your Bible at home. By doing these various things, we are abiding in the vine. We are feeding on the life of God. Okay. So then verse 7 said, same chapter, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So Jesus said you can ask for whatever you want and you'll have it. If you abide in me, that means fellowship with me, and my words abide in you. So he's, he's saying that if we fellowship with his word, we are fellowshipping with him. He said if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So by fellowshipping with Jesus and his word, Faith will enter our hearts, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing the word. And so with the faith in our heart, we can ask for what we need and we shall receive it. We shall receive it. Or whatever we desire and we shall receive it. So he said, if you abide in me, there's a condition, and my words abide in you, that's how faith comes. You will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. Verse 8. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. Now, question. Jesus said, by this, my Father shall be glorified that you bear much fruit. By praying and having our prayers answered, we are going to glorify God. We're going to glorify God. So God is saying that the result of verse 7 is answered prayer, and the answered prayer will bring God honor and glory. By you receiving the desires of your heart when you pray, God will be honored. You see, that brings, when you talk, you talk about it. If God answers your prayer today, you're going to tell people what God did for you. That brings God honor. And he said, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. In other words, God wants to answer our prayers, family, God wants to answer our prayers. And he tells us how to get the prayer answered. 
by abiding in the vine, fellowshipping in the word. And he says, if you'll fellowship in my word, you'll have the faith to ask me for things. I'll give them to you, and God will be glorified because he's answered your prayer, and you'll testify. Praise God. So say this. Answered prayer is the fruit of verse 7 and 8. Now then, John 10, 10. The Lord Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it, abundant life, more abundantly. That you may have life more abundantly. All right, so if we desire to enjoy the abundant life, one of the things we need to do is feed on the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God. How? Spend a little time reading God's Word every morning. And if something gets your attention, stop reading. Think about that. Read that verse over a few times. Meditate on that verse. Let it feed you. God wants to communicate with you something that you need today or tomorrow. That's why that's the Holy Spirit will highlight that to your heart. Okay. So, although it is not possible to enjoy the abundant life, it's not possible to enjoy the abundant life without feeding on the Word of God, without reading the Word of God, without listening to the teaching like you are now from the Word of God. It's not possible to live the abundant life and experience it all without that. That is not the only thing required in order to enjoy all there is in the abundant life. There are other things which we've already looked at. For example, as I said, we need a fellowship in church. Go to church, fellowship in a fellowship group with other Christians. Come to church. Pray in the Spirit. When we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying the abundant life into your future. Romans 8, 26, 27. Walk in love. When we walk in love, we are protected from danger and harm. God's love, you're fulfilling the law of the new covenant, and the devil cannot attack your life when you walk in love. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully treat you badly. Okay. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let him guide you. That's so important. We can make wrong choices in life and end up suffering from, from those wrong choices. It costs us money. Families have split up. People have even died taking, making wrong decisions. So follow the Holy Spirit. If you have a peace in your heart, God's God saying, go ahead, I'll bless it. If you don't, then don't do it. And finally, worship God. Tell the Father how much you love him. Tell Jesus how much you love him. All right. So, but today, we're going to focus in on the Word of God component or the Word of God aspect, the piece of the, the, piece of the jigsaw puzzle called the Word of God. So, as we look at the box of the cover of the jigsaw puzzle, we'll see the abundant life picture. But one of those pieces is the Word of God. And without that, there's a hole in the picture. All right. So let's talk about the Word of God. Go to John chapter 1 and verse 1 in your Bible. And I'm reading from the New King James translation, John 1.1. 1, 1. Right. In the beginning was the Word of God. So in the beginning, that's before God created anything. Before there was heaven, before there was earth, before there was anything except God. When God stood on nothing. In the beginning was the Word. First thing, the Word. And the Word was with God. So the Word was with the Father. And the Word was God. So the Word was also God. The Word is also deity. 
So you got the Word who is deity and the Father who is deity together. Now verse 2 says, He was in the beginning with God. So the Word was in the beginning with God, and the Bible calls the Word He. So hold up your Bible and say, This book is called He. Okay. Now watch verse 3. All things were made through Him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Hold up your Bible and say, the word of God is called him. And through the word of God, him, nothing was made that was made without him. You see, the Father gave authority to create the worlds, to create humanity, to create the animals, the birds, the bees, the flowers, everything. And Christ actually spoke it. And the Holy Spirit acted on what Christ said. So in the beginning, the Word spoke. Now, let's go, please, to verse 14, same chapter, John 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God took on a human body, entered a human body, and lived on the earth. And we beheld his glory. We could see his glory. Whose glory is that? The glory of the Word. The glory of the Word. Notice, the Word is called his. All right? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right, now go to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. Now remember, what we are about to read happens, happens after the rapture during the second part of the tribulation period, when God pours out his wrath and judgment on those who are God-haters, Satan-worshippers. They missed the rapture, and um, they are part of the Antichrist kingdom. So God's judging the Antichrist, and he's judging the unsaved. Right, now, it says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Verse 12, his eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So the one sitting on the horse is called the Word of God. That's his name. His name is called the Word of God. So Christ or Jesus, his name is the Word of God. That's his name. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. So this is saying that Christ will judge the nations and then rule them for a thousand years. 16. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this Word of God person is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So because of what we have just learnt or read, we will now be able to understand what we are about to read. I'm going to read something that you probably have never understood, 
But because of what we've already studied tonight or today, this morning, you now will understand it. All right, go to Hebrews 4, verse 12. I hope you have a Bible open. All right, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. For the Word of God is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest knife cutting deep into our innermost thoughts and desires. Isn't that true? When we read the Word of God, it goes deep into our heart, deep into our innermost thoughts and desires. It checks us, makes sure that we're on the straight and narrow. It fills our heart with faith. It also corrects us. Okay. So, cutting deep into the innermost thoughts, And desires. Now, watch this. It exposes us for what we really are. So, when I read the Bible, I see my shortcomings. I see my good points. I see my strengths. I see my weaknesses. It exposes me for who I really am. Now, verse 13. I read all that to read this. Nothing in all creation can hide from him. Hello. There it is again. The word of God is called him. Right here. So, I wonder how many times you've read Hebrews chapter 4 and read that and thought, what is this talking about? How can the word of God be called him? Well, now we know. Nothing in all creation can be can can hide from him, everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. The Bible has eyes. The Bible is called his. This is the God to whom we must explain all that we have done. So here we see the Bible is called God. It is called his, and it has eyes. (laughs) Because, family, Hold on to your seat. The Bible and Christ are one and the same. One and the same. So, when you read your Bible, you are standing before Christ. You are standing before Christ. He is speaking to you. You are drawing on his life. You are tapping into the vine when you read your Bible. No wonder Jesus said in John 12, verse 47, from the New King James translation, if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. Now we go to verse 48, the last part. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Got it? New King James translation. John 12, 47. If anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. Go to verse 48, the last part. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Hmm. So, We have to be judged by the Word of God. It's the Word we stand before on Judgment Day. It's the Word we stand for. So when I read my Bible, I can let it judge me right now. I don't have to wait for Judgment Day. When I read my Bible, I can say, okay, I need to start doing this. I need to stop doing that. I judge myself. And Jesus said, if you judge yourself, you'll not be judged. Right, praise the Lord. Let's do it. (laughs) Hallelujah. I want to be a doer of the word. I want to fellowship with the word. I want to fellowship with Jesus. How about you? Of course. Now, this is because the written word of God and the living word of God are one and the same. Let's say that together. The living word of God, Christ, and the written word of God are one and the same. So, the written word of God is the living word of God. And Christ 
is the written word of God. They're one and the same. Psalm 107.20, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Hold your Bible up and say, God sent me this book to heal me and deliver me, to protect me from all danger and harm. Praise God. All right, Romans 15, verse 29. Paul said, I know that when I come to you in Rome, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Paul said, when I come to you in Rome, I'm coming in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel in Christ. So when I come to you with my wife in February next year, by the grace of God in the name of Jesus, I'm coming to you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now, what's that talking about? It's saying Christ and his word are one. The gospel, the word of God, carries the fullness of the blessing of God. Say that the word of God, the Bible, carries the fullness of the blessing of God. So all the blessings of God are contained in the Word. In other words, you could say this. Everything God gives you will come through the Word first. Say that with me. Everything I receive from God comes to me through the Word first. Because we can't receive anything from God without faith. And faith comes to the Word. And when you read the Bible, you know what the will of God is. You know what you can ask for, what you may not ask for. So, it's important. The Word of God plays a vital part in walking in the abundant life. This full blessing comes to us by feeding on the Word or abiding in the vine. So that when I feed on the Word of God, I'm abiding in the vine. All right, well, praise God, I love to continue, but actually, I've only shared with you about 45% of what I'd like to say about the Word of God component. So I'm going to put the rest of this Word of God component into next weekend's message. That will be our message, the 55% that's still to come about the Word of God. Now, I'd like to say this. What I'm going to share with you next weekend is so incredible, it's going to blow your mind. And when I'm done sharing the value of God's Word with you, you're going to be so in love with the Bible that you might even sleep with it on your pillow. <laughs> but one thing's for sure, it's going to increase your Bible reading life. You'll do that automatically once you've heard this. You'll just love it. I'm sure you love God's Word now, but you'll love it a lot more after next weekend. All right. So good being with you. Please bow your heads, close your eyes. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.